Proverbs chapter 10, and we got up to verse 18. And we're in the, some parts, I mean, there's exception. We're in the, this or that. Right and wrong. Yay or nay. Proverbs 10, 18. Solomon puts forth something right, something wrong. He puts something for evil, something good. And we're to look at the Bible, we're to look at the scripture, the verse, and look at our lives and say, where do I stand? Because we already saw in Revelation, you can't walk down the middle of the road. When we look at these verses, are you standing on the right side or are you standing on the wrong side? Proverbs 10, 18. He that hideth hatred with lying lips, and he that utters slander is a fool. Now, start off our very first verse, it's not a yea or nay. It's about a liar. Slander and lying lips are the same. And he that hides hatred with lying lips, that's a two-faced person. He hates you, but oh, he just talks so nice to your face. Face to face, he's nice. Behind your back, oh, he'll tell people what, what he feels about you. And then he that utters slander, he that lies. And slander is a judicial term. When you're in a courtroom, you slander, you're lying. The Bible says you're a fool. Lies are, are fools. Santa Claus, Easter Bunny, Tooth Fairy are all foolish. And when a man gets up in the pulpit and he tells a Baptist story and applies it to his life as it's something he has done, and I've heard it, he's a fool. To say, listen, this is a common story of, amongst preachers. It's an illustration. In the multitude of words, there one is not sin. But he that refrains his lips is wise. Okay, so here's a comparison. Somebody who talks too much and someone who refrains his lips. Okay, which one are you? Now, want is not sin. You say, well, what on earth is that about? The more you talk, the more you're going to have chances of sinning. And when you refrain your lips, you're wise that you're not going to stumble. And to realize that God said, Jesus said, Every idle word shall man give an account. John Wesley would speak no more than 10 minutes with a person. He figured anything over 10 minutes was a sin. And he would stop talking as recorded. You know, if you want a criminal to hang himself, a judge will just let him talk. And if you're going to lie, verse 19, and slander, verse 19, you have to, verse 18, you have to have great memory to, memory, to memorize your lies. Because the more lies you tell, even one lie, well, you got to remember what you said, and if it's not the truth, it's not going to come to your mind. It's not wise. It's foolish to lie. The tongue of the just is his choice silver. The heart of the wicked is little worth. Okay, we got the just versus the wicked. We got the tongue versus the heart. And we've been looking at the tongue. We've been looking at lies. So a just, wise tongue refraineth. And that would be like going to a store and, okay, you're looking at silver. And you want the best silver. But the heart of the wicked 
has little worth, it's dross. It's the scum. And Jesus says, out of the heart proceeds adulteries, murders, lies, and thefts. And Jeremiah says, the heart is deceitful above all things. Who can know it? The wickedness is the very foundation inside his heart. And that's compared to the man who, who is just with God and his tongue and his lips know when to speak. The blessings of the Lord, it maketh rich. And he added no sorrow to it. Okay, this is another one of them verses. That there's no yay or nay. It's one complete verse. And it says, God's blessing, God's happiness of the Lord, it maketh rich. Now, we can't go reading right away, money. That's not what rich means. And I know that's the world's term. But God can make you happy with rich health. God can make us rich by a family. God can make you rich that you have a car that gets you to work. It may not be the prettiest car. God may make you rich by you have a roof over your head and food in the house. And it may not be the Taj Mahal. And then rich. When you are doing right with God, think about the riches you're going to get in heaven. Gold, silver, and precious stones. And those riches are not something you're going to spend and carry around in a, in a purse or a pocketbook in glory. See, the world looks at the rich as fame and fortune and money and stocks. And, no, God's riches can be anything. When Israel was in the wilderness, the riches of Israel, which they complained and griped about, was they were fed with manna every day. No one ever tasted, the Bible says in Psalms, the angel's food. And it's a blessing of God. And he added no sorrow to it. Okay, the worldly riches. I gotta worry about someone's gonna steal. I gotta get a security system. I gotta watch my children. I gotta hire a security. I gotta get a save. I gotta get cameras. I got to Oh no, my, my investments they, they took a they took a dive. I lost my job. With the world's riches there's loss and sorrow and theft. Jesus says set thy affliction above where where a thief cannot come in, where there is no rust and, and corruption and moth. There are going to be people at the great white throne judgment one day who's had vast riches. And yet they did not know God and God does not know them. The man that Jesus spoke about, I'm going to tear down my barns, I'm going to rebuild, and I'm going to say soul. And God says tonight your soul shall be required. That rich man that, that had Lazarus eaten out of the garbage can. He's in hell today. He was a rich man. Paul at the end of his life, he says, listen, bring the cloak. Just bring me the cloak. Paul didn't have worldly riches, but God took care of him. It is a sport to a fool to do mischief. But a man of understanding has wisdom. So again, Proverbs chapter 10, do or do. Or don't do. There's a word, interesting word for sport. We have the fool. We have a man of understanding. A fool has no understanding. 
again, the understanding is the understanding of God. With that understanding comes wisdom. Now, a fool can know nuclear biology. But if he doesn't know God and doesn't know Jesus Christ today, and he dies without the knowledge and the understanding of Jesus Christ and the gospel and Calvary, he's going to go off into a place called hell and off into the lake of fire. A lot of good that did him. Sport. It's his fame. It's his goal. It's what he runs after. It's what he catches. Do mischief. And what's opposite of mischief? Wisdom. The fear of the wicked, it shall come upon them. But the desires of the righteous shall be granted. All right. Here's the wicked. Here's the righteous. The wicked man feareth, but he does not fear the Lord. I don't want to lose my finances. I don't want my spouse to leave me and take everything with alimony. I don't want my car to, to get wrecked. I don't want my business to fold. And yet the righteous, I'm praying for a wife. I hope the Lord will grant that. Uh, Lord, I help you give me good help. Lord, give me the, 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 the farmer's market ministry back. The wicked fear desolation, and in hell they'll be desolate. I want the Lord Jesus Christ to come. And guess what? If the Lord tarries and I die, Jesus Christ is still going to come whether I'm alive or dead. Those that are dead, those that are asleep, Shall, uh, shall go forth, and those that are alive and remain shall go forth. As the whirlwind passes, so the wicked no more. But the righteous is an everlasting foundation. There's the wicked, there's the righteous. Okay, now we're 25 verses into chapter 10. Which one are you? You can't be both. You gotta be righteous, or you gotta be wicked. You can't be half saved. And if you're saved, you go, well, I live a wicked life and I don't that's unacceptable. Revelation chapter four, you're making God sick. The cold Christian gets nothing. The lukewarm Christian gets nothing but the anger of God. The whirlwind passes and the wicked are no more. All right. The whirlwind, the destruction of the whirlwind is there. But when the when the tornado is gone, where is it? How many tornadoes have there been this year? Where are they? I don't know. They've gone back into the clouds and where are they? Where's the wicked man? He's in hell. Possibly in the figure of a worm. That's not the night though. You know, the Bible says, He that has the Son has everlasting life. He that has not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abiding upon him. You know what that verse is saying in John 3, 36? You have eternal life in hell, but that's no life at all. Every man that is born of a woman is, has eternal life. You're going to live forever. You're either going to go to heaven by Jesus Christ or you're going to go to hell without Jesus. And the Bible states in hell, that's no life. You have no name. You have no life. There you are in hell. So what? We're going to forget about you. We found earlier with the names and, and remembrance of people. Uh, we're not going to remember you. After the great white throne judgment, Revelation 20 or 21, I forget which one it is, when God shall wipe away our tears, 
All those people that are cast into the lake of fire, our mothers, our fathers, our spouses, our children, our grandparents, our co-workers, after the great white throne judgment, Revelation 21 or 22, when God shall wipe away our tears, we're not going to remember them no more. But the righteous is an everlasting foundation. And Paul says in Corinthians, that foundation is Jesus Christ. That's forever. I've got the sun. I've got light. As vinegar to the teeth, as smoke to the eye. Now this is one. This is one verse about one particular subject. So the slugger, the lazy man, to them that send him. Irritation. You ever get them the smoke in your eyes? You ever enjoy a pickle and you just get that that vinegar? Me, I love pickles. I think about pickles and I just can taste that vinegary taste in my mouth and it's an irritant. And it's irritations where the man that sent the slugger is the job going to get done. I wonder where he is. Is he on his way? Or is he loafing somewhere? And that's the business of the world today. There are loafers being paid not to do their job. They're at the water cooler, they say. And it's sorry that some of the laws of America is those loafers you got to promote and you got to keep because the law says you have to keep. And meanwhile, the employer is like, I don't know if I can depend on the guy. It's an irritation and no dependence. The fear of the Lord, there it is, prolonged day, but the years of the wicked shall be for shortened. Fear the Lord, those that fear the Lord versus the wicked. How you doing? Where do you stand? Your fear of the Lord is prolonged days because you're going to do things, hopefully, that are right in the Bible. You're not going to anger God. You know, God got so angry. I was reading today in, um, uh, where am I? Uh, Leviticus? No, Numbers. You know, God got so angry with Israel in the book of Numbers, his people. He says, Moses, I'm going to wipe them all out. And I'll make of you a new nation. The loving God. Can God get so angry? God said, as far as the Lord suffered the ordinance of the church, if you if you don't take heed to the ordinance of the church and, and take it as something lightly, it can cause sickness or it can cause death. When you fear the Lord and you want to do right and you strive to do right, it will give you a longer life. Now, I don't fear the Lord. I'm going to smoke cigarettes. And then you don't live to your full... You know, God has set forth a time of our life. And we don't know what it is. But we can shorten those days by alcohol, by tobacco, by improper sex, improper living. You know, we can shorten our life by not looking both ways when we cross the street, when that car comes and smacks you. Oh, yeah, I can sue them. It do you no good when you got lifelong pain or you're dead. And if we live right and try to do right and we are of use by God, God may even extend. Hey, I'll give that guy more life. I can use him. But the years of the wicked shall be shortened. You say, well, listen, I know Christians that die young. And I know wicked people that die old. True. Very true. But I know Christians who have died all ages that are in eternity again with the Father and Jesus for all eternity where there's life. And I know wicked people that are in hell today. I wish I didn't believe they were in hell, but they're in hell today. 
and they don't they got eternal life but there's no life at all there's Again, yeah, John 3, 36, he that has not the sun shall not see life. Even though you're living eternally, it's no life. The hope of the righteous shall be gladness, but the expectation of the wicked shall perish. Righteous versus wicked. Where do you stand? Notice the righteous has hope. The wicked has expectation. Look at verse 7 of chapter 11, real quick. When the wicked man dies, his expectation shall perish, and the hope of the of unjust man perish. There is an unjust man, he is hopeless. Proverbs chapter 10, verse 28, the righteous man has hope. You know what the righteous man's hope is today for the Christians? Jesus Christ, our blessed hope, and he's coming. Titus 2.13. The hope of the righteous is gladness. What's gladness? Being with God the Father, being with God the Son, the Holy Spirit, without pain, without sorrow, into New Jerusalem, where the Jew would be getting that land, the new earth, to be with his fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and David, and Solomon. And the expectation of the wicked? Perish. What's perish? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. What is perish? Perish, when you got a perishable item in the refrigerator, that means it's going to go bad. And when your milk has gone bad because it's a perishable item, you throw it out. And when, it, when, when a soul has rejected Jesus Christ, God throws it out. And he throws it into his incinerator, which is hell. And you get incinerated for all eternity in the lake of fire. You know, that's one of them rules of, of uh, uh, the thermodynamic. An object will always remain in, this, in a different state. It's never completely obliviated. That soul in hell doesn't get obliterated, it just burns and burns and burns. Our souls in glory in New Jerusalem will get a brand new body. Our eyes, our ears, our nose, our fingers, our toes, and everything in glory. And Jesus said that rich man in hell had eyes and fingers and toes in hell. Everything a, wick, a wicked man wants. I want to be CEO of the company. And then when the worlds and the heavens are fled away and the earth is gone before Revelation 20, so is that CEO position. I want to get that specific year, make and model of that car, which will be in fire one day. I want all the money in the world. All the money will burn up. It will do you no good. The way of the Lord is strength to the upright. But destruction shall be to the, wick, to the workers of iniquity. All right. We got the upright and we got iniquity. God will give you strength to go through your life. Now, I did not say God will get, get rid of all the storm. I didn't say that. I didn't say God's going to get rid of all your troubles and problems. I didn't say that. You will have the troubles. You will have the problems. You will have the, the storms. You will have the grief. You will have death. You will have uh, medical issues. And if you live godly and do right, you'll have people who will hate you, misunderstand you, misrepresent you. They'll lie about you. They'll hate you. Yeah, if you walk in the way of the Lord and Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life, God will give you the strength to go through it. But destruction shall be to the workers of iniquity. Everything that has been built, workers, everything has been done, 
This great land of America will be destroyed as much as Sodom and Gomorrah was built by workers. That tower of Babel in Genesis was built by the workers and destroyed by God. Solomon's temple were built by workers and, and all the interesting things and facts about Solomon's temple and it was destroyed because of sin. And if God destroyed Sodom and God destroyed Judah and God destroyed Jerusalem and God destroyed Israel and God des destroyed Samaria and God destroyed if it's workers of iniquity built and made by sin, God will also destroy that. You will not find America, Germany, China, Japan, Manila, and the United Kingdom in Russia in, in glory. You won't find them. Many of those nations are God forsaken. The righteous shall never be removed, but the wicked shall not inhabit the earth. Righteous and wicked. I'm going to die one day if the Lord tarries. I'm going to be absent from the body and present with the Lord. If the rapture happens, I'm going to be somewhere in this earth and I'm going to go up to the clouds. I'm coming back. I hope I get an inheritance, at least one city. But I'm coming back on horseback when Jesus Christ, when he comes back. And when Jesus Christ comes back, he's going to settle Jer Jerusalem as the city of the Jewish people. And he's going to sit king. As David as the prince and that temple before Jesus Christ God himself and they're not ever going to remove that Jew again out of the land that Jew will get the new earth the Christians will get new Jerusalem and the Gentiles I believe will get the new new heaven and the wicked will be in hell then the wicked will be in the lake of fire and they'll never you know a wicked man and the devil will never see new Jerusalem the devil and the wicked man will never see the new heaven. Satan and all those in, in the lake of fire will never see the new earth. The wicked never see God. At the great white throne judgment it is Jesus Christ that is judging. I know Jesus is God and God is Jesus. But still there is God the Father and God the Son. The wicked man that goes in the lake of fire does not ever see God. I will see God one day. Not only will I see Jesus Christ who is God, but I will somehow see God the Father on the throne. Not the wicked man. The mouth of the just bringeth forth wisdom. And the forward, that means very wicked, tongue shall be cut out. All right. Are you just or are you forward? Are you wicked? The mouth and the tongue. The mouth of the just bringing forth God's wisdom, the word of God. And it better be King James. If it's not King James, it's not wisdom. And the forward, the wicked, vile tongue shall be cut out. Look at Matthew 5, 29. God will put an end to the tongue of the wicked. And I said, Matthew 5, 29. If thy right hand, if thy right eye offend thee, pluck it out, cast it from thee. For it's probably that one of thy members should perish, and not thy whole body should be cast into hell. If thy right hand offend thee, cut it off, cast it from thee. 
For is it proper for thee that one of thy members shall perish, not thy whole body shall be cast into hell? If you got a, a forward tongue in the tribulation period, you better cut it out. But that, that's not going to stop it either. Your thoughts. You don't have to say it. You've got to think about it. Remember what Jesus said about adultery. You don't have to get in that bed with that woman. You just got to think about it. At the great white throne judgment, Jesus is going to shut all tongues. And all mouth. And the very last thing they're going to say is, Jesus is Lord, amen, as they go into hell. Like a fire. The lips of the righteous know what is acceptable, but the mouth of the wicked speaketh forwardness. All right, there's the righteous, there's the wicked. How are you with your mouth? Have you studied James chapter 3 with the tongue? You know, our tongue is the only muscle in our body that does not need rest. It can go blah, 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 blah. How is your tongue? How is your lip? How is your mouth? Is it acceptable? If not, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins. You still got dirty, filthy jokes coming out of your mouth? Dirty and filthy uh, language coming out of your mouth? But the mouth of the wicked speaketh forwardness, wickedness. Are you saved with a forward, wicked mouth? You need to repent and get right with God and deal with that mouth and that lip and the tongue. Because you can't be righteous and have that forward speaking mouth of the wicked. You can. Oh, you can. But at the at the judgment seat of Christ, it's not going to get you a reward. God is not going to do what they do today. Oh, we're going to give you a trophy anyway because you did. No, God ain't going to do that. What rewards we get of gold and silver and precious stones and inheritance? Their earned rewards. And if you did not earn those rewards, you're not going to get those rewards. So, Christian, how is your lip, your mouth, and your tongue? Are you righteous before the Lord and yet got a wicked mouth? If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. What are you doing in verse 32? Where do you stand? You're saved. You're always saved. You can't lose it. Glory to God. But is your mouth wicked? Because if your mouth is wicked, you're not righteous and you know not what's acceptable. And a wicked, forward mouth does not please God. 